Hey everyone, it's Lisa and today is Wednesday and I am going to do this tutorial for you. It's just kind of like my go-to. It's kind of like, I don't know, it's just my go-to look that I've loved for years and years and I venture away from it and I always come back to it. It's what makes me, I don't know, it makes me feel the most comfortable and that is wing liner, lashes, and not much on the bottom and then a peachy or a pale lip and contour and everything. So, Here we go. And I'll I be usually, right to keep my bangs from being messed up, you know I love these things that Rita sent me. And you can find them, they're just called Velcro hair something. And I know you can find them on eBay, but I love these, because then I can kind of do my bangs back and not worry. The headband always messed well, up what my I hair like so to bad. do, you know, on a perfect day, is I like to go from a fresh washed face, dry my face off with a, you know, I usually use a wa dry washcloth, and I like to go straight into my CC cream. And I like, I still like the original CC cream because my skin is more, it's normal to oily, leaning more towards the oily side. And the, um, I like to use this as a base, whereas the Rachel K Renew is a lot of coverage and color, and you can use it, you know, as a full foundation. So I can use both of them, but I still prefer this. So I get a little bit and just, you can see that it will just give me a little bit of coverage and even out my skin tone, but mainly I get it right here and all these lines beside my nose and just kind of spread it out. So you can see from one side to the other that just helps reduce the redness and it's just a great primer. It's not, silicone rub it in just like and it's you know it's skincare has all kinds of good stuff in it and sunscreen and then i start right here and then kind of spread out and it see it just blends right into your skin okay and once that has kind of dried it kind of has like a it's not a slip like silicone it's more like a and it's not powdery but it's it's got a good slip, but it still grabs, and I love it. That's is a combination now of the Smashbox Studio Skin 15 Hour Wear Hydrating so Foundation. Is I mix it with my very favorite Makeup Forever, and I usually put a pump of each on the back of my hand, and I'll show you before I mix them the color difference. See one of them, the more gray is the Makeup Forever. It's more of an olive tone. And then the more yellow tone is the Smashbox, and it is the 2.4. And what I do is take this, I love this little, I've got the F Sigma, F80, I've got MAC brushes, I've got the Real Techniques, but I always prefer this one, which is the Sedona Lace 602. I just like, I think I like the angle of it too. And I usually just dot it and mix it on my hand like that. And then I go straight to kind of blotting it on at first, kind of, I guess, to spread it out. And I do one half of my face at a time. But you can see it's just beautiful and it matches my skin so well. And this is, this is one of the reasons I really like a liquid foundation is I love being able to just go over my whole eye and underneath and, you know, really everywhere now you'll notice I didn't use my Giorgio Armani I've been sometimes I've been doing that afterwards I've just been seeing how much I really need by the time I get through with all of my foundation because sometimes I feel like I don't maybe need that much around my eyes and it's always best to put the least amount possible around your eyes the least amount of product and the least amount of powder when you're getting in your 30s, 40s, 50s, try to go and try not to do matte. Okay, so I've pretty much blended that out so you can see the difference. And then what's left, I usually carry down my neck. And my hair is usually down, so I don't worry about, I do have to worry about my hairline because my hair does go back right there. And I keep blending until, <laughs> sorry, I keep blending until I feel, see how this brush is really good about letting go of the product. It doesn't, I, it gets synthetic, but it kind of gets where it's almost dry feeling. And then I feel like I can really work 
but on my I face can in. never ever do any makeup look without my Laura Mercier because that's what to me gives me the glow so I am using the rich vanilla I can use a rich vanilla or rich vanilla mixed with classic beige but classic beige on its own is a little too it's got a little bit too much gray in it so I'm gonna do the rich vanilla and there may even be a little bit of classic beige still in this this is still my favorite here. brush it's the Sephora airbrush 55 this is just the old version but the new brush version is very good too so I do tap it off and I start right where I don't mind if it's the darkest which is like in my contour and then I just start a little bit more than dusting but not as much as you know trying to get a lot of coverage out of it I'm mainly just putting an even layer over everything and it just gives me you can see how it'll it catches like the contours of my face and gives me a little bit of more dimension make a mess and pour the rest of this in here it's always so messy but I tell you the um, pressed version is not as good you don't get as good a coverage or the glow that you do out of I the loose. I, see, and I heard her squeaking at the back door okay so then the next thing I'm gonna do today I'm sure I've already probably told you in an intro I'm gonna do my go-to what I feel best in routine and a lot of this stuff is old but it's just you know I try new things try new things this is what I always come back to and it's not that I want to use it every day but this is what I this so is one what of my I favorite feel best things in. and it is discontinued but you can probably get the newer version in the same color I haven't looked but it's the Dior nude powder and it is just one of the darkest ones it's called um mocha it's 050 cafe mocha and there is another mocha it just doesn't have the stripes so i know i just was at dior the other day and i saw it and i'm using this old dior brush that i found on ebay they don't make these anymore but it does come with this brush which you could use let me see let me use it so i usually go into that darkest stripe and then do a little contour and then I try to I don't think that works as good as mine here see mine's fluffy and then I blend it up onto my cheekbone and I don't feel like I need as much bronzer like all over my face because you know the the tone of the foundation was good and so then I do it around my hairline always always even if you're not using bronzer on your face always put a little bronzer around your hairline it's just makes everything look better okay and then I'm going to take my Sephora airbrush that I put the powder on and kind of blend out that line for my contour. I just like seems like when they're face pow darker face powders instead of a bronzer they just have like a prettier tone and a silkier finish and I just like that one okay so the next thing I would do if I were going to do a highlighter one of my favorite ones has always been this Laura Mercier little starlit mosaic in it's a shimmer block in starlit mosaic Starlet I think this may mosaic. have been a limited edition, but they have several of them, like a rosy one, a tan one. But I like to get a little bit and just run on the very tops of my cheeks before I put my blush on. Okay, and then my blush. I thought and thought about this because, you know, I've gotten so many new blushes lately. But if I'm going to be honest of my favorite things, I always, always go back to my Lorac Exposed because it's such a pretty peachy tone, but it's not too pink, not too orange has just enough shimmer in it it's just perfect so you can I either use the MAC 116 or my favorite is the Bobbi Brown blush brush and I just pat both sides like that and I just put it right on the top of that cheekbone like that and
like that. And then sometimes I do do just a, what's left on my nose just to kind of put it all together. And then that is pretty much it for the face until the end, until I see, see, I see that I need some concealer. So I'll do that at the very end. And I do usually spray with Fix Plus. But so I just did, quick. I counted them. I did about 10 squirts of the Fix Plus, but they're not full squirts. It's kind of just like misting all over my face really well. And then I either blow my face off with the hair dryer or stand in front of our little space heater and kind of dry it. And it, that takes everything that I've done and kind of, you know, melts it together. And it gets, you know, everything in every little crevice, you know, every little pore. So it just looks like skin. And I love it. I've never veered away from that little thing that I do. And I do take either this, the Derma Blend, or the Prep and Prime. They're all, to me, they're all just as good. And I usually take a little brush. It's an old brush, it's discontinued, but any little brush, and I go over my little lines, and right here, just my T-zone. Okay, myth. A lot of people, you know, they try myth, they don't like it, and they don't ever use it again. This is probably my, I think I just, I got it from Back to Mac the other day. It's probably my third one, because I use it as a base. And the reason is, if you want a peach or a pink to, I don't know, it's like pop a little bit more and um, have a little bit more pizzazz, a lot of times if I'll put myth on underneath it, it helps with that. And it's a great base because it's kind of dry and it takes all the color out of your lips. There's the FedEx man. And um, so I usually use this as a base, like that. And then I blot most then of it off. One of my favorite combos lately has been my Lee Swatchy Lee combo. Swatchy Ginger Liner. And you can get these in the States at Namie's. And so I'm going to line with my ginger. And I sharpened it to make sure it was real sharp. And I do it a little bit at its side. And you'll notice I'm holding so I can make sure that line gets real smooth. And then I usually start at the bottom. And I don't shade in because I don't want to take away the color of this soft coral from Lee Swatch A. And this lipstick is a really, it's a different formula. It's not matte, but it's a dry lipstick, which is good because it gives you that kind of matte look, but it's not as drying and it lasts forever. So what I do is, and you can see it's still got some of the lip liner left on it. I'll take, take that off. I go right over that lip liner. And then I have to sometimes kind of do like this to make sure I get in all those little lines and everything on my lips. Okay, that's it. Okay, so I've got my lips done. And um, let's see, the next thing I'm going to do is my eyes. And I have been, you know, I go all over the place with eye bases, but the one I've been loving lately, and I've loved it for years, is the Laura Mercier Buff. And it's just a real pretty, like a skin tone, but with a little bit, not really shimmer, but you'll see what I mean. Just a little bit of pizzazz. And I just put a little bit on each side. And then make sure it gets all over. All the way up and then I usually when I'm doing a wing it. liner I kind of like to do my eyebrows for some reason I can I don't know just I don't know I feel like the my wing kind of bounces off my eyebrows when I'm doing more of a smoky eye I don't think my eyebrows are as important but when I'm doing just the wing liner I feel like they're more important and what I like to do is I love all my different products but when I'm doing this look First, I usually brush them up like that. Okay. okay, this is the, instead of the fling, this is the MAC Lingering, which is really 
borderline too dark for me, but what I've enjoyed doing is using this darker color, but a lighter stroke and get it more defined. Sometimes when I try to go in a little bit heavier with the fling, it gets murky looking and it's not as crisp and pretty looking. So I've liked this. Same thing, if I were gonna do this with a powder, it would be charcoal brown. So I like to just find those places that need filling in and kind of extend that out a little bit and then just kind of lightly um, fill in the front like that. And I do like to kind of connect that right there because it's kind of a, a gap in my brows. Like that. Okay, and let's see, start filling in that little gap, just finding the places I need to do, and then bringing that out. And I try to keep my, you know, strokes going with the way the hair goes, like they kind of curve, so I try to keep curving them out like that, and then up. I heard my stomach growling and then shade just a little bit under here like that okay now you can see now that one is much higher than the other so sometimes I bring this one up a little bit higher but I don't want them to be you know I don't want this one to be thicker but I do add a little bit to that one just to kind of help it match first I like go that. over it again with the spoolie just to soften it up some. I've just been using whatever brow gel I pick up, either the blonde or the um, clear. Just real quick, just to make sure they stay. I had on. several requests for the Tom Ford palette. Several of you have gotten it and you wanted me to do a tutorial. I think I've already done one with, the two, with this palette, but this is just a little bit different and I find that every day, no matter what, I end up using at least that dark brown shadow right there. So this is what I've been doing lately is I, the first thing I always do, and I would say for me, I always need it for the simplest eye, I always need two shades in my crease. Even if I don't do an all over color, I don't do a lid color, I always need two shades in my crease. One for a big, you know, I'll show you. One I do this with and I grab a fluffy, Big fluffy brush, not a tight the Sigma brush, SS 224. It's an old one, but the Sigma one like this or the Real Mac 224. And I go in this, not the bone color, but the one next to it and get it on my brush. And I do the whole crease coming all the way in like that and going all the way out, even past my brow. I like to fill in this whole area from the tail of my brow to here all in that you know mid-tone color and then I just I'm not really worried about you know any precision right now I'm basically just getting that whole area shaded in like that and then I just keep on and I kind of work it down onto I want to keep the very end of the lid I don't want to put this on it, but I work it all the way down to that very first part, that very first fold. And then I work it all in here and just get it like that. And it looks like I've taken it maybe a little too far out. No, nope, that's it. Okay, and then get some on my brush. And I'll show you a lot of times I'll even hold my eye and do it like this. And you can see these shadows are just so smooth. I mean, I didn't have any anything but my eye base down and a lot of shadows would have caught and not blended well but this one always does these shadows are just amazing they're kind of just foolproof it's like every time you do an eye look with them you just like it okay and then I'm going to do a little bit you know out the only place I want any kind of highlight is at that very top point if I the next thing I do is the liner because the third color that I put in my crease, and I don't know if I'm going to put this lightest color or not, I'll decide in a minute. Um, I don't think I am. I might put it as a highlight, but the third color I do after I always liner. come back to either the Stila liner or the Kat Von D Trooper. 
And this is my Stila, and it's a kind of old. I had to trim the little, the edges break down or the ends break down. And what I, I usually had to, do um, is I start, you can see me, I start just, you know, at the lash line. And that's what's real good about these pins is you can really get where that lash line kind of folds down. And I go all the way to the end, everywhere the lashes are growing. And then I go all the way inside, all the way to the tear duct, but not past. And then I just, you know, get a good line going like that. And then this is what's important for your wing liner. And there's all kinds of wing liner. There's, and I do all kinds. Sometimes I'll do it more out. Sometimes I'll do it more up, you know, but to me, my favorite for my eyes is the up and lifted, but I have a little bit of a hooded eye right there and that skin. So it, sometimes it can be kind of difficult and almost always I have to correct some. So that's just the way it is. That's why that little thing, never ask a girl with winged liner why she's late because we're working Real on Real important <laughs> is to look straight in the mirror and see how your eyes are gonna look when you look straight on because it's gonna look whack when you really look at it. It's gonna be real long and crazy looking, but it just all comes together in the end. So I'm gonna want my wing to kind of end up about right here. And you just, you can put a dot or usually what I do is just find it and then just drag it down like that. And then I go and I drag it over all the way across and just kind of meet up at the end of that line. Okay, I want to carry it out to the very end of this, the end of your lashes. So if it hasn't gone over there, I try to kind of meet it up, which is not always easy because that skin is kind of um, loose or, you know, it gets folded right there at the ends and then you fill it in. Like that. And if you want, you know, you can go more and more extreme with your liner like this. I'm gonna show you another way to do this on the other eye that might be easier that you could do. And it depends on how much you want that. You know, if you really wanted a precise tip, you just have to keep, this one, this pen has kinda of gotten old so it doesn't do it as much. Okay, so like that. Okay, on this eye, I'm gonna show you just the old school method of getting your angle right and dragging it across like that and then but see my angle still isn't right let's see yeah this is what you have to do when you do it that way see you've got the basic lines you're just filling it in different you're starting from the top and working down instead of starting at the bottom and working up then I go fill in it right down to the lashes, especially me because I don't like to tight line. I feel like it just gets on my contacts and I just don't like to do it. Gets too much in my eyes. Okay, so there you have both wings, just two different ways to do them. Now, with this one, what you can do is just, I'm probably gonna mess it up now, but um, there's just all different things you can do. Just play around with it. Just before you take your makeup off at night, you know, play around with it and see. Um, but you can just keep on making it longer. And what you would do is when you make it longer, just bring it in right here. And I really like a thick liner, you know, over my eyes because I like being able to see the black because it's a look. I mean, this look is not about the shadow or it's not about anything else, it's about the liner. So I think that looks, does that look even to you? Close enough. When you get your, maybe this, see here, I'm gonna go mess it up now. Um, always have these handy to kind of clean up right there. And then, see this pen is really drying out. Okay, see now I messed up and now I have to make this one thicker. I 
Okay, now I'm going to take... <laughs> I know I had a Q-tip in here that I had... Yeah, it's this one. I had already put some Bioderma on it so I could, in case this happened. This is what, you know, when I think about doing tutorials, I get... You know, I'm just not that good at getting everything just right. The first time. So... Hmm. Looks like I might have taken this out too far. So just erase that. Right there. And I think if my pen Yeah, you guys better. are going to get to see me having to do the whole thing over. Okay. So take it like that. And I just can't get this pen to make a good point. Okay, there we go. I just shook it some. Okay, I'm not going to mess with it anymore because they're never going to be exactly the same. Okay, the lesson learned here is this pen has This had is it. the easiest part. After you've got your wings, now you go in with your defining darkest color. And I love this color right here. Not the sparkly one, but this dark brown one. And my favorite brush is one of these Louise Young. There's a couple of them. The LY... Oh, goodness. What is this one? I think it's the LY24... But it's these brushes, Nordstrom has them, and you can order from her website. But they're long, and they're just perfectly tapered. And I just dip the end in the brown, and I go right from the wing. Here, I can do it in the camera, I think. Right from the wing, and I go over. And see, I have that kind of tilt where it's going right in that perfect space. And see, see how much better that looks, how much more definition. So I get some more, and that's what's so easy about this. And you go from your wherever the end of your wing is and just go right in there. And I like to go down in this part right here, but it just depends on how your eyes are shaped. Then I go more in here. Okay, and this is blending it out as you go. But yet it's giving you that really good line. And let's see, it looks like I need a little bit more. It's hard to tell this far away. I'm used to being like really in the mirror. Okay, and so when you get through with that, then I like to take a little bit more of that first color that I worked with over here on this fluffy brush and then kind of blend that out. Blend the top of it out and even the bottom. Kind of just go all over it. And that's what's so wonderful about these Tom Ford shadows is see how it stays dark and I blend it all over it, but it, it blends out, but yet it stays where it is. It doesn't end up being just like all over one color that you can't even distinguish between. It's so neat how it does that. Okay, and now is when I would do my highlight. And I'm just going to use a pencil brush with this bone color that comes in the kit. And I'm just going to do it right here at the top of my brow. And if you want to do, you know, some in here, this isn't sparkly, so you can. Just to lighten that area up. And if you wanted to do just a little bit above that liner, you can. I don't always do this part because I kind of like it more muted, but maybe for the camera it might look better. Okay, and so now I am ready for my I either mascara. use a Lash Blast, CoverGirl Lash Blast in the orange tube, just the original, or the CoverGirl Lash Blast Clump Crusher. And then I go over it with the Chanel Volume de Chanel. And the reason you do that is because that Chanel puts so much on your lashes and it's such a wet formula, you almost need some kind of base underneath it to get your lashes the way you want them and for them to stay where they are. And then when you put that over it, it's just perfection. So I'm going to first thing I'm going to do is put on my clump crusher and this has a really good brush and it gets right to the lash, I mean right to the end. So what I do is I almost, I do, I touch my lash line and then work up 
I said when I'm doing this part of the mascara, I'm not really I'm not really concerned with the ends of the lashes. I'm more concerned about where they're going, spacing them out, and just getting them kind of placed where I want them to be. And um, so I get them all going like that. And then a lot of times I'll kind of tilt my brush to the side and start doing like this because I would rather my all my lashes go kind of out like that than just straight up. I always get these ones on the end because that's what's going to go with your wing. I okay. want as okay. much lash as possible. So this is a sample of the Chanel and I actually just got a new one, but I'm going to use this up. I think there's still, it's still some in here. And so this is just easy. This you just kind of, it goes, you'll see it just goes right on. And it doesn't get clumpy because you've already gotten a base. And you could say, well, I'll just use my shadow base but i don't like the way they're white and you've got to worry about covering them up this is just kind of like so easy and i just try to make sure i hit those ends like that and now this is up to you you can either i like to leave nothing under the eye i've already put my eyeshadow base and if i wanted to just put maybe this mid-tone color with the pencil brush bit. wherever my pencil like that and then if i wanted to do a little bit more i could take that first real light mascara and just barely touch usually what i do is just barely touch i almost just bounce off of the lash line i'm not even worried about getting it on the lashes i'm just putting a little bit of accent is concealer and I always wait to the end just to see how much I need you know what color I want to use nine times out of ten I love this and it's not the radiant it's the buff which is more of my skin tone and um, I just put a little bit right in that darkest more than dark circles it's more when you get older you just lose that fat right there and so you get a shadow and so you want to keep this right in that shadow matter of fact I've learned to try to pat it in with my pinky and that way I don't spread it too far I keep it kind of right in there like that and if I have extra I will start coming down and then out like that okay so you can see something the I do too sometimes two. is I take just a little bit of the concealer a lot of times what's left on my finger and I just run it down the top of my nose just to give me that little bit of um, highlight. Okay, so that and is it. Now, looking when I look in the camera, it looks like I need more color, but I'm hoping that it doesn't look that way to you. So I do not even have an outfit of the day, but I am going to just show you because these are some sweatpants that I wanted to show you last Friday, and I just didn't have time in that long video to get them in there. But you know I love these signature sweatpants from... Victoria's Secret. They were the ones that were kind of slim and a little bit cropped, so they're perfect with Uggs, and they didn't have them forever. And now they've come out with a new pair, and I'll put the name of them right here, and that's what these are. So I was going to show them to you This is just a Mossimo, you know, tank from Target. And then here are the pants, and so they come in all different colors, and this is a small. So they run, I don't know, pretty true to size. I'm either a small or a medium, but even in those other ones, I used a, a small. I have smalls and mediums. Just depends on how the kids are getting out, out half a day today. So I just have on my Uggs, which I'm going to need a new pair soon. They're getting kind of beat up looking. And um, they have this down the side, and that's it. But you can see how they're more of a slim fit. And I love the way they go just right to, they've got the cuff and go right to the Ugg. Like hey, so I hope you easy. enjoyed that. And leave any questions below, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.